Yes, no, Santa. At least Hillary did a good job. Yeah, he tried. Mm. Small, small <laughs> try. Small, just, just a little. Yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. So, K vocals. Who's K vocals? Yeah. The full name is Seidu Kelvin Izang. I'm from the northern Sorry? part of... Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm speaking Spanish, right? Yeah. Seidu Kelvin Izang, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, K vocals is the stage name. I'm a music director, a music minister, and a professional voice coach. Yeah. So you were listening to me here sing, and in your mind you were telling yourself, this girl, the things quiet. she's singing, now <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> you did say it, but it went through your mind. So when did you start music? Okay, so um, I was in secondary school, and um, mm, we're in this club, you know, in our secondary schools back in Nigeria, we have this press club, drama club, and all those clubs on Fridays. So I decided to join one of the clubs, which is a drama club, and we sing, we do dramas and everything. So I decided to give a special number, and before you know, you, okay, you can sing. I'll say, okay, that's good. Okay, let me try and join the choir. And the choir was like, mm, I'm not sure you can sing. You're using 10 keys. Uh, you can't back up. You can't do anything. I said, okay. But me, I will still stay in this choir because I believe I can do it. So I started practicing. I, I was just a backbencher in the choir. Three months later, I, I did administration in churches and all night. And everybody was like, wow, who is who's this, who's this guy? Okay, from there, I started singing. I didn't believe on all the negative comments about me. So I kept moving and I believed that I could do it. In the next one year, I topped the choir. I became the lead soloist in the choir. From somebody that he said How? used to sing five keys, I decided to go on personal rehearsals. I used the negative comment to build myself. So sometimes when I get no, it's an opportunity for me to work harder instead of me to just relax and just say, uh, people are saying that I'm not good enough. You know I'm that person who sings five keys. So I'm <laughs> Let me tell you, if we start, if we start saying, if we start singing, we give you all. I won't end at we give, I will end at all our glory. Hmm. Maybe at least seven keys, right? <laughs> I think, I think I'm at average of seven. So hmm. how, how has the journey been? Okay, so the journey has not been that easy, right? Because um, I'm from Muslim background, right? My... My, my parents were Muslim, and uh, especially my dad decided to convert to Christian, right? So, and in the northern part of Nigeria, if you convert from the Muslim to the Christian, you have nothing to do with each other again. In short, sometimes you don't stay close. They might decide to, if you understand. So, <laughs> uh -huh, so, uh, so uh, we just moved to Lagos. We're in Lagos, in Nigeria. Yeah? So... Um, we're just there and uh, just trying to build myself, not having any support from anybody. Then I lost my parents as, as a teenager, right, mm -hmm. in an accident. And so I was just there. So I had the opportunity to either be good or bad. I had the opportunity to either do the secular part because I had gigs that uh, came to me. I'm like, okay, you just have to sing on Friday and Sunday evening mm -hmm. and you earn a lot of money. Just two days, right? Just Friday and Sunday evening. And you can still go to Sunday service and sing. I was like, no, I can't be here and there at the same time. I can't be in darkness and light at the same time. So I had to uh, make up my mind to like, okay, I really want to serve God. But although I didn't have anybody to guide me, right? But I still want to do it. So I kept pushing. Music was the only thing that was sustaining me without anybody. So I kept ministering in my church. I was having support from the church. So I kept moving, I kept moving, I kept moving. Uh, then later I got admission to study English language in the University of Joss. So uh, I, I, I went to, uh, that is Plateau State. Uh, Joss is located in Plateau State, northern part of Nigeria. Although we call it Middle Belt, right? They are not that thick northerners. In Plateau State, we have over 20 something languages. So it's not like oh. we all speak the same language, but Hausa is a general language. So it's just okay. So I'm just there. I got scholarship. I did my university. I I try to serve, right? In Nigeria, there's what we call youth service. Mm -hmm. So you serve the country for one year. I decided to serve the country. Mm, I didn't serve the country immediately. I decided to stay to serve God. Because 
the place I um, am in is like a student ministry. So when there's break, student go home. So when the student went home, I was like, okay, I need to serve. So I served for one year and God rewarded my service. From 2022 ending, that was when the man of God was like, okay, there's going to be an opening and everything. I was doing vocal coaching for like two years, just with just 3,000 followers on Facebook. I was like, okay, let me just be intentional. Since God has said there's going to be an opening, right, even in the ministry and everything. So I decided to push. And before you know, within two weeks, like two weeks to end 2022, I got 25,000 followers on Facebook. That was when my content started wow. going viral. Yeah, I, I, I there's, there's, there's a common phrase in Kenya when you ask someone, how, how did you do this or how did you get yourself here? They tell you, need God. No, yeah, this one, I, I have to tell you, it's all about being intentional about what you want to do. Giving excellence, right? Kings are attracted to excellence. It's not about mediocrity. A lot of people don't want to build themselves, don't want to walk, but want to go far. You can't go far like that. So I need to know laws. Media has laws. There are laws and principles of media that you need to learn in, uh, in order to be able to dominate, right? But some people are just relaxed. Sometimes they are comfortable with the level they are in. Yes, that is why um, the word rada, I love it. It means dominion, right? Mm -hmm. It means dominion. It's part of the program I will be doing tomorrow. So that dominion is what I decided to say. Okay, God has called me into dominion. God doesn't want me to be small. He said the plans he has for me are of good and not of evil to give me an expected end. So I was like, okay, I need to push. I need to be intentional. Since God, I said the word, I don't need to sit down and relax and the word will come to pass. I need to also work harder. If God is saying that there's going to be promotion, it means there is going to be more work. Promotion doesn't mean you're going to relax. For some people, promotion is relaxing. But to me and to some people that know what promotion means, it means harder work. Like you need to work harder to achieve or to maintain that level of promotion that you are in. If not, you will not be promoted again. Okay, so I decided to push. I was intentional about my content. I, I wrote content that people will be able to relate with, right? So I started pushing and before you knew, Everything started moving like that, and today we are over 140,000 on Facebook, right? And God is faithful with that. I started my music ministry officially 2020, releasing songs, wow. right? But I was singing in the choir mm -hmm. and just doing the normal choir things. But I decided to dive into the music ministry 2020, and between 2020 and 2024, God has been faithful. I've ministered with people like uh, David Dam, K Strings. Uh, um, E. Daniels, some, some of our Nigerian, yeah, yeah uh, Nigerian people, right? And I've received some couple of awards in my states and everything. Uh, God has been faithful, uh, but it was not an easy journey because I was discouraged not to do it. In short, some people said, you don't have, I don't think you have any, uh, like, no hope. <laughs> there is no hope in doing this music at all. But I believed that I had the calling of God upon my life because there were different prophecies from different men of God. Yeah, different prophecies from different men of God. Like over four or five of them have, have gone to minister in different states program and somebody just said, okay, there's a call of God upon your life. Lie down on this altar and pray as I preach. Before you know, somebody's just walking by the roadside and just, are you Kelvin? Yes, the Lord said this, that, that. I said, wow, this is serious. I needed to confirm from myself because sometimes it's not just enough for people to see it. You just have to confirm also. So I was in a program and um, I said, God, if you truly call, called me into this music ministry, show me a sign. Within five minutes, the woman was doing some, some talks and like that. I was like, okay. Uh, let me go out for some prayers that she was calling. And before you know, say, you, this guy, God has a call of God upon your life. Lie down on this. I say, good God. So that's how fast you can answer <laughs> prayers, right? I was like, okay, that's good. That's good. So all those pointers made me to like truly know that really this is what God wants me to do. The major problem of some people is that they don't actually know what God wants them to do and they want to prosper there. You can't prosper outside your primary assignment. How do you feel there. the experiences you went through prepared you for ministry? Hmm. Before God uses a man, he first of all breaks the person so that he'll be able to use the person. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't want to start using a man and later on the man falls. God doesn't want you to fall. It is never the wish or it's never the plan for God for anybody to fall. He likes us to prosper. He wants us to do good. So for that to happen, he has to do breaking. 
He has to do the chiseling and everything. So I was just there allowing God to do what he needed to do because as a teenager, I had a lot of peer pressures, right? Different friends bringing different attitude. I struggled with different attitude to a point that I almost committed suicide, wow. right? At that point, then it was only God that delivered me because why? Well, I didn't have anybody like per se to say, okay, they are training you and like that, parents at home. You just have your free will to do anything you want to do. Nobody's now your parents, right? They can decide to give you advice and you can decide to take it or not. It's left for, for me. So I struggled with a lot of addictions and everything, but God was able to bring me out of it. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, and that helped to build me and to build the person that I am today. What are some of the things you've learned um, <clears throat> along the lines of building um I believe what you're doing is ministry, it's not just singing. So mm. what are some of the things that you've learned along the lines of building a ministry? Mm. In building a ministry, right, um, you need to stay in the place of prayers and studying the Word of God. A lot of people just feel it is only when you have an engagement to do probably a program or you have administration as a pastor, that is only when you pray. No, you're supposed to pray without season. That's what the Bible said praying regularly so i was able to develop the habit of building a prayer life if not mm, there's what we call spirit and flesh battle and if the spirit can overcome the flesh that is only when you are praying and studying but if you don't do that the flesh will overcome the spirit and that is when you struggle with sin so a lot of people struggle with that because they don't see in the place of prayers. They don't pray regularly and they don't study the word of God. That is the disadvantages of not doing that. So I was able to, to ask God to help me because it's not easy. Even to pray, it's not easy. It's the Holy Spirit that helps you to pray. We do not know how to pray. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to pray. You want to study because most time you want to pray. Some people want to read the Bible but sleep. They just sleep like this. Some people want to <laughs> pray and they just feel, hmm. 15 minutes prayer can look like two hours in their eyes, but you can watch season movies for two days. Do you understand? Because mm -hmm. the flesh is excited <laughs> yeah, about that, right? So uh, the journey is just, just all about... Yeah, I think I'll just stop there. Ah, it's okay, it's amazing. So which part of music ex especially excites you? Mm, I love worship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is something that happens in my spirit when I hear worship songs and... Uh, chants and just 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 beautiful and sometimes you just feel like you're listening you just feel like praying immediately even if it's inside the car sometimes i hear inside the car and i'll just start praying sometimes i'm walking i'm just start praying like that so that's me once i just feel that urge to pray i just start praying immediately so those sounds although i love praise songs right yes you know some people want to feel that they're afro artists or the gospel music ministers that are doing a reggae or other part of music are not spiritual, which is not good. Mm -hmm. God he has diverse ways of using people. It's not everybody that has to sing worship or praise, right? Some people just have to do the other part of the, some people call it gyration. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's one part of music in Nigeria. It's gospel music, shall they call it gyration. They, they, can, they can do both secular gospel there, but majorly the gospel, you see them gyrating and they're happy and they're they are like excited, the Afro part, you're just doing some style and you're just dancing and you're enjoying yourself in the presence of God. Some people will see you as a kind of person if you are doing that. But <laughs> we are not kind of, but for me, I enjoy the worship more, but I still open my mind to other music. Mm -hmm. Yes, because God is not limited. Why should I limit myself? Right. So in your opinion, <clears throat> what do you think is the role of a worshiper in the life of a congregation? Hmm. Now, a worshiper is supposed to lead. That's how you say, come and lead us into worship, right? But a lot of people just feel it's just all about singing. Worship is beyond singing. First of all, it's a lifestyle one, right? Then you first of all have to sing unto God, that is minister unto God before unto men. So if you don't stay in the place of prayer as a music minister, as a worshiper, you don't study the word of God, then everything you do on stage can be emotion and entertainment. Because most of the times, a lot of people worship out of emotion. Now, there are some songs that are very powerful and can also be powerful on a lips or, yeah, on someone's lips that is not even spiritual. You don't pray, you don't study the word of God. Because the song carries some sense of power that when you just sing it, boom, 
the atmosphere might just decide to change. Mm -hmm. And so, as a music minister, it's not just all about the songs. Some people just believe it's just all about the trending song and all about the song before the atmosphere will change. No, you can just speak a very easy, simple hymn, and you are ministering, and the Holy Spirit is moving. Why? Because you have an altar, you have a personal relationship with God. So, as a music minister, you are supposed to, or as a worship leader, anyone you feel like using, you are supposed to lead people. Now, you cannot lead people to a journey that you don't know the direction. You can't lead people to a place whereby you don't know how to get there. Do you understand? You're supposed yeah. to lead people to the holies of holies. Lead people <laughs> into the place you Yeah, so if you don't know the way to that place, how do you lead them? So at the end of the day, some people just worship out of emotions, use ignorance. I've seen some people just come and say, eh, eh, God that has delivered you, God that has saved you, you will not stand up. Some people use emotional blackmail to tell some <laughs> people to... Because why? You don't pray. You don't do anything. You just come and say, eh, you are supposed to... I was just supposed to tell you to worship God. God has been this to you. God has been that to you. Da -da 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 -da. If you carry the presence of God, you don't need to motivate people too much. Just, just lead. And once you start leading, the Holy Spirit starts doing something to their spirit. And before you know, they start connecting. And so, first of all, you need to know the way. How do you know the way? You have to constantly stay with God in the place of mm -hmm. prayer and study. Then you know how to journey to a particular place. And when you just come out to sing in open, you know how to start the journey and how to lead the people to where they need to be mm -hmm. for God to come down and do everything he wants to do. So what does worship mean to you as a person? Hmm. <laughs> okay, so for thee that must worship, must worship in spirit and in truth, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so worship is just all about exalting ad uh, and ador adoring God. A mm -hmm. lot of people just feel... Um, now, I, I usually correct a lot of singers when it comes to worshiping God, right? There is difference between worshiping God and requesting from God. There are some songs that are written that are slow, that are fast, that are not mm -hmm. actually worship songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you understand? There are some mm -hmm. songs that are prayers, but sang in a slow way, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody is coming to the presence of God, and the first song you are approaching God with is, My Helper, there is something that made me come into your presence. You are like, ah, I don't understand. <laughs> When he says you enter into his gift with thanksgiving and to his, into his court with praises. There is a principle, there is a protocol that you need to follow. Then why are people now just coming to start with my helper who do something new? Him? <laughs> like, do so, I don't understand. <laughs> so, do you do, do so? Those songs are beautiful, right? Uh -huh. But the first thing you need to do is approach the presence of God. When it comes to worship, you don't need to say anything. Adoring God, exalting his name, like just... Holy, holy are you, Lord. Glorifying him. So worship is just adoration to God, right? Mm -hmm. Glorifying God, exaltation to God and everything. Then after that has happened, then you can make your request known through a song or through prayers. Mm -hmm. Right? So those songs are not bad, per se. Some people feel, oh, those songs, no, they are not bad, please. But anytime you're approaching the presence of God, anytime you want to worship, please, don't request for anything. Come. So is that procedure for worship? Yes, that's the procedure I just mm -hmm. mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. so it's just you coming, approaching, first of all, mm -hmm. with thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving and praise. That is the procedure. You cannot just come and approach God anyhow. That might be the reason why God has not been moving in your <laughs> ministration. It's true. That might be the reason why God has not been answering some people's prayer. Because every time you approach the presence of God, is give me this, give me that. He did not, you, you do not even come to exhort like... But that is why some churches, right, their opening service is praise and worship. They don't start with prayers. It is after praise and worship that they start with opening prayers. That, that is some church, yeah, like the Redeemed Christian Church of God, which is RCCG. They start with praise and worship before the opening prayers. Wow. So it's a protocol that a lot of people need to follow, but some people just feel, okay, let's, 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 let's just come and start to say. Do you think that worshippers need to be taught the protocols of worship? Apart from being taught, they need to be discipled. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of people just feel worshipping is just all about, or uh, worshipping God is just all about uh, singing and everything. No, 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 no. You need to be discipled. You need to know uh, what to do. You need to know the protocols. You need to know how to receive songs. There's a difference between writing songs and receiving songs, because re receiving songs is uh, by the aid or by the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is how you receive songs. But a lot of people just feel it's just all about sitting down to write and everything. There's some songs that you hear and you're just feeling like praying or you just feel like worshiping God. Why? Because those songs were not received from here. Like they were not written from this earth at all. They were received from a place. Mm -hmm. Right? So they need to be taught how to receive songs. They need to know the protocol of worship. They need to know your lifestyle needs to be an example to people. You don't live a double life. You're, you're worshiping God. Uh, in the open and while in the secret place you are doing another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is not good at all because it is now common among music ministers. Mm -hmm. You are sleeping with ladies around, you are doing this like that, mm -hmm. you are doing that like that and so everything is just, they feel it's not all about singing and God is merciful, mm -hmm. His grace is there. You might do all this rubbish and you still sing and the presence of God will still move because God doesn't take away any of the thing that He has given us. He doesn't take it away. Now it is only sin that drains it. It is only sin. That is why God said we should oh, restrain perfect. from sin. God doesn't take it away. He's saying don't sin because if you sin, it will draw everything that I've deposited in you. So please don't sin. If not, that sin will empty you. So a lot of them, they might just start in the sin. They are just active. They are worshiping. Everything is moving. The devil is deceiving them. You are still doing this and the presence of God is still moving. Why not continue? Before you know, give them some years. Everything will just broke. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. That's such a powerful. That's such a powerful insight. You know, we we live double lives, and we're in the church, and we we think, ah, so long as I came, I showed up on Sunday, and the presence of God moved, I can still continue living in that kind mm. of life. Which you've actually raised a very valid point. Mm. How do you choose songs for Sunday, or rather for worship, for service? Now, this is a very tricky question. Because when you look at the professional uh, music churches or professional musicians, they arrange all their songs for service mm -hmm. already, right? Like they practice it. There are some churches in Nigeria that their singers are full-time singers, right? They mm -hmm. decide to just appreciate them. I will not just say pay, right? They just decide to appreciate them monthly and everything. So, but they serve in the church, right? So they practice everything they do back to back, like the prison worship and everything, they arrange it and they sing it like that. Now, you carrying the Holy Spirit, you are not restricted or you are not limited. So you can just go and sing all those arranged songs and the Holy Spirit will move. Because the Holy Spirit is disciplined and orderly. He's not scattered, right? Mm -hmm. It is meant for a music minister to prepare, right, before going for ministration. So when you prepare all those things and all your songs you arrange and everything to minister, then when you come to minister on Sunday, be very, very attentive to the Holy Spirit. That is where a lot of people miss it. The Holy Spirit doesn't want you to uh, be limited or be disorderly, right? He wants you to be orderly. But if he wants to uh, disrupt or obstruct that meeting, you need mm -hmm. to permit him. Probably you arrange some certain kind of songs and the Holy Spirit is now saying, raise this song. Because there is something he wants to do in this service. Then because you now, professional, you feel we have arranged it. That is how you mm -hmm. just shut the move of the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> but you need to be very, very attentive. In the arrangement, in the preparation, arrange your songs. I just gave an order that you need to follow, right? So the songs, first of all, the songs you need to list are songs of adoration, exaltation to God. Then later, if you feel you want to put something and that has to do with request or anything like that, you can later put it there. Mm -hmm. But what, whatever you're doing, your arrangement, your preparation, you need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit in case He wants to do something in that service. Or in case you're meant to sing five songs and the Holy Spirit says, stay in that song till the whole section because He wants to minister to somebody in the congregation. Wow. So how, what does your personal uh, time with God look like? Or rather, what does your personal prayer spiritual time look like so that's why it's called personal right mm -hmm. personal time with god mm -hmm. is personal time with god <laughs> hallelujah amen <laughs> i saw what you did there <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's 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 what it's supposed to look like. Now everybody's supposed to have a personal time with God, right? Uh -huh. So it's 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 personal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what has been the most frustrating aspect of being a worshiper? For hmm. other worship leader in Okay, so one thing that a lot of music ministers face is lack of honor. Mm -hmm. Especially for those that want to do the ministry work. Now, there's a difference between music ministry and music business. A lot of people are doing music business. They will answer to God on the last day, right? If mm -hmm. you are one of them, you and God will meet. Pigeon will say, when I go dig around, you and God, right? <laughs> My Nigerians understand that. <laughs> you and God, we said through that. That's uh -huh. what I, I said, right? Uh, music ministry is different from music business. Music uh -huh. business are those that are requesting for a specific amount of money to be given to them before they perform or minister. If you don't give me one million Kenyan shillings, I am not going to come for that ministration. Now, you have decided to reward yourself. Now, Matthew 6.33 6, said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And every mm -hmm. other thing shall be added unto you. A lot of people have been seeking after money and after themselves. So those ones who center themselves, I know there's going to be a lot of contradiction about this, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people will tell you, they will look for verses to want to back up, but the truth is the truth, right? Mm -hmm. If you are doing music business, you have rewarded yourself. If you are doing music ministry, you are walking unto God and not unto a man. Mm -hmm. God said that he's going to reward you. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, said every other, he didn't say some things. Everything you need in this life, he will give it to you. God is not a man that he should lie. If you serve him faithfully, he will reward you. So the major thing that a lot of us face now, those of us that want to serve in the music ministry aspect that doesn't want to put like a particular price tag for ministration and everything. Some churches or some pastors just dishonor. Like you just come for ministration and God bless you, God bless you. So <laughs> even bottle water, some people do not give you. Nothing, no transport, nothing. You pack the whole thing, you, you get. So some people get frustrated because of that. They want to just fix a particular amount because they feel, oh, they've dishonored me. Now, they didn't dishonor you. They dishonored God because you are not working for yourself. You're working for God. Mm -hmm. And God is the one to deal with them, not you. This, so that is what one, one of the things that the devil has used as an excuse to make a lot of people to start fixing money because they've dishonored us, they don't respect us, we are doing this, we are doing that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. God is the one in charge of blessing. So one of the things we face is that lack of dishonor. You go for administration, they just, I beg, I beg, I beg. Just, <laughs> just, just. And some of, some of them, they will really be blessed. Like the Holy Spirit will move mightily in the meeting. And at the end of the day, you hear stories. Unlike some people tell you, send me your account number. You send that account number, one year later, nothing. My friends have... My <laughs> these things have been in Kenya. Look. My fellow music ministers will go for administration. Uh, like, in Kenya, we call it county, right? In Nigeria, we call it state, right? In another state, after administration, the other day, God bless you. Some of my friends followed truck from another state because they went thinking, at, at, at least now, I travel from another state, you give me transportation, and even if you don't want to give me honorarium. For we are even one era. Went there, finished ministration and nothing. At the end of the day, they had to look for one truck that was coming <laughs> from that side to enter the truck and it brought them back to the state. One of my friends ministered, from, like, I don't know how far here is from another location, right? Very, very far distance and one there he didn't give him, he had to trek to his house. Wow. Do you understand? I didn't carry transport, thinking as, at least I'm going for administration, the pastor should be able to honor me. Right, and uh, so a lot of them are just like, but to make this very simple, as a music minister, don't depend on honorarium, right? Have a business you're doing that when you go for a musician, whether they honor you or they don't honor you, you carry your transport and you go to your house <laughs> <laughs> so that you avoid trekking and jumping on trucks, That's... right? Right, yes, yeah, so allow God to deal with them because they chose to dishonor you as a minister of the Lord. So, do you ask for honor yourself? I don't ask for it. Okay. I don't ask for anything because I believe it is God that has called me and it is God that will bless me. God has men that he will use. True. The same people like Nathaniel Bassi, uh, a very good role mm -hmm. model, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't do all those things, but he has a business that he's doing right, which is good, into estate management and everything. And um, he went for administration in a particular country. I will not call the country. And uh, after the administration, nothing. God bless you, God bless you. God bless right you, man of God. <laughs> he came with his crew and everything. He had to pay their flights back and everything. He didn't say anything. 
that man will have to deal with God. Do you understand? He, he, did, he doesn't have to drag the man, oh, I went for a mission, he didn't honor me. Mm -mm. He's not working for anybody, he's working for God. So if you choose to dishonor any minister as a pastor or as a music minister, you are dishonoring a pastor, or as a normal church member, you are dishonoring your pastor, you are dishonoring God. So I see a lot of people dragging pastors. Ah, you are doing yourself. You are dragging <laughs> pastors. The Nigerian in, hmm. in you has come out. Yes, so I decided to say, ah, that is special. Yeah. You did drag pastor. Ah. Pigeon, you are dragging you pastor. Drag you, don't, pastor. You, don't, you don't know who you are dealing with. Sometimes you see some difficulties in your life. You don't know the reason why they are happening. It's because you have, you have done a lot of dishonor, said evil things about the anointed ones. Do you understand? People that God has anointed because you feel you have social media, you can just come and say anything. Just come and comment. Ah, this pastor is just this pastor is this pastor is this. ah. We know. well done. So you can be hardworking, you can be intelligent, you can have everything you need to succeed, but you will not go anywhere because you have chosen to dishonor God, not even the man. So God will just look at you. You want to succeed, right? Stay there. Wow, interesting. I think it's so interesting listening to you. One because of your Nigerian accent. <laughs> <laughs> Two, you have very interesting and deep nuggets that. Some of these things are bypassing our generation. Mm -hmm. we, we wake up and we, we want to drag people, we want to drag ministers, we want to drag pastors, and, and it's quite something. So who are your main influence, uh, worship influence? I didn't, I didn't get that. What did who you are your main uh, worship influence? Okay, 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 that's for the music artists, right? Yes. Uh, people like Nathaniel Bassi, people like Teofilo Sunday. I listen to them a lot, Sumisola, yeah. Those are majorly the three people that I love so much. To sing. To sing. Oh, you can. Can. Yeah. Right? Beautiful. Mm. Yeah, so people like that, I just listen to them a lot. And I just love what they do for God. And I celebrate the grace of God upon their lives. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Ooh, I think we need to, 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 to start landing this plane. But as we land the plane, um, tell me about your song, Dependable God. It's what's the... Uh, it's what I've seen on your YouTube fleet. Okay. okay, so Dependable God is a song that God gave me because he is a dependable God. I depended on him and he came through for me. I just narrated my story and everything, the difficulties, the addiction, suicide time and everything because why? You try to stop, the devil is he's not merciful <laughs> at all. <laughs> He can decide to hit you with five different addictions just to make sure that you don't do anything meaningful with your life. So I was in a stage whereby I almost gave up. I almost went into the road and let one car just hit me and let everything just end. And God was faithful to me despite all my unfaithfulness, despite everything. And the prophecies of God upon my life, he said he's going to do this, he said he's going to do that, he said he's going to take me around the world, he said I'm a global minister and everything. Then uh, the things started happening and everything. So I, released this, uh, I received the song last year, yeah, July, last year. And um, Dependable God, if you hear the song, uh, what you say you will do, you have come true for me. Dependable God. So God is not a man that you should lie. Whatever he said that he's going to do in your life, he will do it. Sometimes delay is just actually God working on your patience, right? A lot of people are not patient. They just want everything. Sharp, 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 sharp miracle. That's our generation right now. Sharp, sharp, especially Gen Z. They like things very, very, yeah. very, 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 very fast, very fast. To them, I have my own opinion. I want to do my thing sharp, sharp. I have my own way of doing things and everything. No, your own way might not be God's way. So you waiting on God is, is, is actually good. It's actually good. Some people tell you God time is the best, right? But some people feel that God is very, very... Very far. Ah, it takes time. They need something sharp, sharp. But in eternity, there is no time. God doesn't work with time. So just wait on him. Whatever he's going to do, he's going to do it. And he's going to do it at the right time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God doesn't want to give you some things because that thing might kill you. Yeah. Yes, that mm. thing might bring you down and might lead you to destruction. So God knows what is best for you. Depend on him and he will not let you down. So that's just a song, Dependable God. He's able to do exceedingly abundant. Do you mind singing a part of it? <laughs> of course, that moment had to come. Okay. Hmm. What you say 
you will do you have come true for me what do you say lord you will do you have come true for me yeah dependable god reliable god <laughs> there is no there <laughs> All right, it's, it's well. Mm. I am just listening to your vocals and I'm like, where? Let me just play like a Kenyan, where? Where? <laughs> where means, it's, it's just an, ex, an exclamation mark for, hey! Okay. I don't know how to describe it from Nigeria, but anyway. Mm. Okay. So finally, what advice, or rather what um, nuggets of wisdom would you give worship ministers in this current age? Okay, so what I will say is don't be rebellious because uh, re rebellion is as witchcraft, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't want to listen to instructions. You feel you want to do things your own way. You feel my own way, my own is me, is myself. I can choose what I want to do. No, it's not all about you. It's all about God. It's all about kingdom. You're here for kingdom work. You're here to partner with God in raising disciples and winning souls. If you look at John 15 from verse 1 to like 15, it's not all about bearing the fruit, but fruit that we abide. So you are called into discipleship, winning souls for God and discipling them. Whether you're a barrister, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a music minister, whether you're a pastor, whatever field that God has called you in, he has called you into making disciples. So not everybody's going to be a pastor. Not everybody will be a music minister. Not everybody will be an evangelist. Some people are called into the uh, media sphere. Some people are called into the, uh, the, 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 what do they call them? Medical sphere, right? Mm. Some people are called into this, um, they, are, they are barristers, lawyers and everything. Different spheres. Whatever sphere that God has called you into, it is for dominion and it is also for discipleship making. It is not you being there to just enjoy money, chill, and you think that's all because our, our, our tradition and our generation has given us a particular order of life. In Nigeria, we call it primary school, after primary school, secondary school, after secondary school, university. In Nigeria, there's what we call youth service. After youth service, you look for work. After you do small work, you do master's. For some people that love academics, after master's, PhD, after PhD, at least you have given it to a few children. After the few children have grown small, you've paid school fees, you will grow old, they will take care of you and you will die. That is a useless way of living life. It is not proper like that. Let me use that word, underline that, <laughs> right? It is for a purpose. Now, you need to discover your purpose. That is the, the, the <laughs> thing I need to say. Purpose is what you need to discover. Need to so don't live life like that. No, 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 no. That is not a good way of living life at all. <laughs> live life according to purpose. What has God called you to do? Or you think you are on this earth to just enjoy, chill and... Relax. Relax. Enjoy your <laughs> we need to go. ball. Right? You know, all these people that call yourself ballers. You are not here to ball. You are here to do something. And uh, uh, if you look at uh, Revelation, it says... The, the, there's a book that's going to be open and another book will be open. It means that every individual has a book that has been written concerning them. Mm -hmm. So you need to know that God has called you for a purpose. And on the last day, that book will be open. I pray that you will live according to that book that has been written concerning you. <laughs> I pray right? so too. <laughs> I pray. So, so, I'm being told we need to, we need to wind up yeah, the session. Yeah, okay. Please let us know where we can find you on social media. Yeah, K-Vocals everywhere. Okay, vocals everywhere. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by on your tour in Nairobi. As you go back to Lagos, please say hi to Lagos people. Lagosians. Lagosians. Mm. Yeah, I was mm. looking for what, do, what what are they called? Lagosians. Say hi to Lagosians. And then when you leave, please teach me a little pigeon. I, I can't be knowing waiting with this alone. I need to know a little bit more. Okay, how are you doing? How are you doing? Ah, that one at least I know. waiting they happen. Waiting to happen, at least I know. What is happening? What is happening? And how uh, far? That's your greeting. How far now? How, how do you greet now? someone? How far now? How you doing? I'm waiting to happen. This is your clothes, fine. Thank you. <laughs> you heard what I said? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've watched a lot of Nigerian <laughs> movies. Exactly. But let's pay away for the next conversation. I think I'll find you behind the tent so that you keep telling me more. No problem. No All right. Problem. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We've had a great time.
Thank you for your nuggets of wisdom and thank you for making time for us. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And God it. bless you, Kenya Asante. Asante Sana. <laughs> that was Kay Vocals where I think the little English I know and the little pigeon I know, I have put it all out there. But anyway, do not touch that dial. We are coming back with more.